Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Verda Cloud Family presentation. Uh, my name is Samir, and I will introduce you to a uh, cloud infrastructure in line. Uh, I'll try to speak more slowly than usual in order for my favorite interpreters to catch up. So on today's menu, there will be first introduction to our team. Then uh, I'll talk about some challenges that we had while executing this project and choosing OpenStack as its platform. Then I will give some details about our cloud features and capacities. And also I will give some details about our cloud components because there are many. And I will also provide some operational insights and as well as some lessons learned in the future roadmap for this project. So first, let's talk about our team. Let me briefly introduce our Verda team. Our team started as a task force within the IT Service Infrastructure Center uh, department with a mission to improve infrastructure experience. We grew into a dedicated department now, and now we have three sub-teams, and our main strategy is to make that the platform for all line services, current services and future services as well. We are a multicultural team, so we have members from Japan, from Korea, from uh, China, from Europe, etc. Uh, a small note about myself. I'm a DevOps and a system engineer uh, with focus on cloud, networking, uh, open source technologies. I have been building clouds for the last five plus years. In uh, this particular team, I'm in charge of several cloud components based on OpenStack. First, let's talk a bit about how we started this project and why we choose uh, OpenStack as our platform and what kind of problems we are trying to solve with this project. So everybody knows that Line is known for its successful services, and many of these services require large-scale supporting IT infrastructure platforms. Uh, in the early days of these services, uh, they benefited from parent company IT service infrastructure, but nowadays, this new incoming service, they require, they are in demand of more modern uh, and flexible platform for the operation. So this problem led to a clash of generations, way of thinking between like uh, how to provide the optimal infrastructure platform. On one side, we had teams that had great confidence, operational experience and working security policies and uh, other kind of experience for traditional service for IT infrastructure. That's kind of an old-fashioned way of thinking. On the other side, we have young engineers uh, that are bringing up modern projects and ideas, but these modern ideas, they require implementation that doesn't really work well on conservative platform. Uh, the main reason for this problem is that these young ideas, they require changes and uh, flexibility that is very difficult on the traditional IT service platform, as well as expensive. Uh, in line, we all understood, understand very well that we need cloud, but we, when we started this project, we were not really sure what kind of cloud, and what does cloud really means. So what is cloud for us? Do we really need a infrastructure cloud or a platform as a service cloud or a service as a service cloud? Are we going to do private cloud or maybe public or maybe hybrid or combination of the services? Also, what kind of architecture and we need for our services? What, what else? There were many questions and all of these questions needed answers. So I'm going to answer these questions and talk beyond how we executed this project. Another obvious question was, why don't we just use AWS and forget about all this private cloud thing? 
uh, well, to answer this, we did consider doing this, and, uh, but we had some special requirements and some conditions that we had to satisfy. For example, we have a strict security and privacy policies uh, that were really uh, difficult to implement on this kind of model. Also, we have a huge scale of infrastructure, and if we just move all of this thing to AWS, it would cost a lot of money. We didn't do a precise estimation, but uh, like a course estimation, it would probably cost several million dollars a month if we all move, if we move everything to AWS. That is why we had to rethink our requirements and we tried to overcome the challenge that we have and with our own resources. Uh, our e initial requirements were large scale. Uh, also, control had to be in our own hands. And we also had to satisfy existing security, availability, and maturity for this platform, new cloud platform in line. But during this project, we couldn't simply predict every single requirement. We had to learn them while doing it. So what kind of challenges did we have when we uh, executed this project? So first, we started to bring up the virtualization platform in uh, line uh, by thinking this would be our cloud solution. But initially, we introduced this uh, well-famous uh, proprietary cloud computing and platform virtualization platform. So we call this cloud, but wasn't really what cloud was meant to be. It, this platform has some merits. For example, the most obvious merit was we had uh, cheap virtual machines, the fraction of the cost of real server. But this was the only merit for us. Uh, everything else was simply done the same old way, old fashioned way. So we didn't have a reasonable API. We had the traditional provisioning of uh, servers or VMs as before. We also couldn't uh, make customization or uh, adding new features to this uh, so-called cloud project without spending a lot of resources, uh, including money. So this was the same old black box kind of model. But this model actually helped us to understand our requirements better and even extend them and learn what, what are really our requirements for this project. So we finally we collected all our requirements. So we all we find out that we also need a solution that will bring two different mindset, the traditional one and the new one, together. Uh, our most innovative project we had uh, in our in line, the recent project. They are all made by cloud engineer, cloud generation engineers. So those people that graduated on using AWS, and they need freedom and uh, flexibility to achieve full productivity. On the other hand, we have like old-fashioned IT service engineers. They were obsessed with security, with policy, with uh, workflows. So how did we bring these two worlds together? Uh, on the beginning of the project, we put a lot of effort in educating and refreshing our team that actually implemented the project, and we worked hard to demonstrate the power of the cloud to the rest of the teams involved. We also adjusted our own cloud implementation architecture and requirements to comply with the old traditional security and policy requirements. Uh, because of this, we divided our cloud into two separate domains. So I will explain about this a little bit later. Uh, but finally, why did we do all of this thing? This is because we think our developers, our users, as customers. So for us, the, the cloud users, the developers, are our customers, and it's sacred for us. So our customers are always right. What they need is what we need to provide. Uh, finally, at some point when we starting implementing this and starting experimenting, doing POCs, 
we needed to choose a reasonable platform for our project. So we evaluated several existing cloud platforms and we weighted their merits and demerits and asked against our own requirements. So we considered uh, several different projects. I will just name the few. We considered vSphere, uh, CloudStack, Eucalyptus, OpenEbla, and finally OpenStack. Maybe some of you are familiar with those projects, but all of them are cloud platform uh, projects. After careful consideration, uh, we choose an OpenStack as it fits our requirements the best way. Uh, besides mentioned requirements, this platform is the one that enables easy modification. It doesn't suffer from the vendor lock-in and it's backed by many uh, big players in the cloud industry. So, let me share some basic OpenStack facts with you for those that don't already know. OpenStack is an open source cloud platform. Uh, it started by NASA and Rackspace in 2010. And this is a project that's mostly implemented in Python. And uh, it's mostly used, but not limited to, uh, infrastructure as a service clouds. In Verda, our actual implementation, we about 60% of all components are OpenStack components. Uh, in Verda, we use OpenStack Mitaka release that was released in April last year, plus the service uh, patches and uh, security enhancements. Uh, although OpenStack has many components, we use a limited set of those components that, fed, that uh, meet our needs. So, we also modified many of these components to best fit our requirements. Uh, all these components are actually set of APIs, which are built on top of various open source backends, for example, storage, network, uh, virtualization, etc. cetera. Uh, all of these APIs uh, and backends are based on top of commodity hardware. So relatively speaking, this is uh, cheap and open platform. Uh, this platform also includes various command line tools and GUI for control and monitoring. Uh, to name some of the most uh, common OpenStack components, uh, there is Keystone for identity management, Glance for disk image management, Nova for network, Cinder for block storage, Horizon for uh, web UI. There are over 20 different components, but we used only a few of them. I will explain later exactly which one we used. Uh, these components being APIs, there are actually much more uh, backends than the actual API components. The main uh, strength and power of OpenStack for us was its own RESTful APIs. So each component uh, in OpenStack has its own open, versioned, uh, consistent, consistent, and very well uh, documented API. Despite many different APIs, a typical, for example, virtual machine uh, use case, creation use case, only needs to use one single API, no API. Uh, OpenStack has also bindings for many pr popular programming languages. So it is possible to orchestrate the IT infrastructure programmatically. There's also a rich uh, command line tools that are also uh, provide a way to do scripting and other flexibilities with infrastructure itself. So now it's time to talk a little bit about our actual cloud implementation, uh, its architecture and features that we currently support. First of all, uh, I'm talking about this word Verda, but I didn't give explanation what it really means. Uh, in the strange language called Esperanto, uh, Verda means green. Uh, also in Spanish, it's kind of adjective for green. 
So we choose this world, word to proudly represent our green cloud. Uh, for the reason that I already uh, explained, uh, we divided our cloud into two different domains. So we have Verda production domain, where we host uh, mission critical services and applications. This domain is heavily focused on stability, security, and workflow. On the other side, we have Verda developer domain, which is a much more relaxed cloud domain where we have a playground for development of various new services and experiments and POCs. Across these two domains, we have different set of features. Uh, for example, in Verda production, we currently have virtual machines, physical machines, uh, private and public networks, uh, DNS as a service component, and MySQL database as a service component. In Verda developer domain, we have all these services that I mentioned, plus many more. So in developer domain, we have load balancers, balancer as a service, database as a service in Redis flavor, uh, object storage as a service, CDN, or content delivery network as a service, and we also had released a container-based uh, platform as a service component uh, a week ago. So why do we have more features in, and components in developer domain than the production domain? Uh, this is because we only enable well-proven and very, very well-tested components in production. Despite this, our developer domain is not a staging cloud. It's actually a production quality level cloud, but with less services. It also serves as a staging area for new components where we evolve and test and verify uh, the stability of new components. Uh, here are some uh, very uh, details about the size of our uh, cloud and the data center resources that we use. Basically, uh, our both cloud domains, we use about 240 hypervisors, about 600 servers for uh, bare metal provisioning. And the rest of the machines are various backends and APIs and uh, databases, etc. So in total, we have about 1,000 servers that are supporting this cloud right now. In the terms of current capacity, uh, we support more than 8,000 virtual machines and, of course, more than 600 self-provisioned physical servers. Uh, this platform was built to easily scale these resources, so in a matter of days, we can double this capacity. Actually, we are just doing it right now. So this graph here shows uh, our growth in terms of both physical resources that we use as well as the virtual resources that we use. Uh, the green line you see here is actual growth of our virtual machine use within last six months. This was updated by the end of uh, last month, so actually during this month, this resource uh, usage grow even uh, further. Uh, actually, just this week, we are actually doubling the capacity of physical machines and hypervisors as well. Uh, now it's time to share more information about Verda Cloud architecture, uh, OpenStack components, and some uh, in-house components that we have. Uh, we had started building this cloud with OpenStack core components. Following the initial release, we also added some custom in-house components that we had to integrate with core components, of course. We also built a custom deployment and configuration management system, as well as custom monitoring systems uh, around these components. So let's talk a little bit about these components that we have. 
Uh, I already mentioned the core OpenStack components. Uh, I will not repeat uh, about their functionality, but basically we have very, very core components that are necessary for the operation of any OpenStack cloud, plus designate that's used for uh, DNS as a service. Recently, we also added an OpenStack component called Poppy, which is managing the CDN as a service provider component. Uh, also, in the early days of Verda lifecycle, we used OpenStack Horizon as our only web GUI component. But after uh, doing many changes in this component, we actually decided it's better to create our custom in-house solution for the GUI. Although we are using all these OpenStack components uh, heavily, we had to do some modification on them to adjust them to our own requirements. And some of the components had even pretty heavy modifications. A little bit about our custom components. We had to use, uh, from the beginning of the project, the bare metal component. This is our custom provisioning, uh, hardware server provisioning component. We also recently started to use VOS, which stands for Verda Object Storage as a service component. And we also have a Fabric LB, which is our state-of-the-art performance-oriented network load balancer. Uh, one of the components that is most visible to our user is our custom uh, self-made GUI, uh, which is simply known as Verda UI. Uh, all of these custom components are developed from scratch by our team. So, let's talk a little bit about how we operate these clouds. Probably most of you know that clouds are very co highly complex system consisting of many cross-dependent components and backends, and Verda is not exception. So we will talk about how we operate these complexities in our Verda cloud family. When we do design and implementation and release of these components, we try to stick to DevOps principles. Uh, most importantly, we try to release often. Uh, now it's on a weekly basis. We also try to test everything and all the time. And finally, we monitor everything and all the time. When we built uh, Verda Clouds, we also built uh, other supporting systems and components. So we built a configuration and deployment management system that we named Kraken. This system covers all our target infrastructure and all our environments and also part of our CI. And this system is based on Ansible. For the monitoring and alerting, we actually use two different systems. Uh, one is Grafana-based monitoring system that we built from scratch. Uh, in this screenshot, every green box represents the health of uh, each of the components that we have in our cloud. We also use a proactive uh, log monitoring system based on Kibana Elasticsearch. So we have logs aggregated from uh, almost thousands of our servers into a single place. Finally, I would like to mention some important things that we learned while we implemented this project, as well as some uh, future roadmap and new features that we expect to release soon. Um, one of the not so obvious thing that we learned in, in implementing and working on this project is how important it was to keep this complexity low. So we tried to stick to a so-called KISS principle, at least when we deal with individual components in this complex system. On a typical cloud, we have many, many uh, moving parts, and if something breaks, it probably affects everything around it. So we try to assign individual developers uh, uh, to be in charge of individual components and as well as individual backends in our complex cloud. Uh, because we are not 
just using OpenStack core components, we also modify them. And uh, we had to adopt some uh, principles about how we modify these things. So we, first we had to learn and get familiar with components that we need to modify in principle with OpenStack. And we also had to learn several backends in details and sometimes implement them by ourselves. So we need to learn how to troubleshoot and how to modify and how to change things without uh, introducing too much uh, issues. So we had to stick to certain principles. Uh, when we choose to use OpenStack, we we waited for it to reach a maturity and a production worthiness so that we can rely, rely on it as a reliable platform. Uh, initially, we didn't expect OpenStack to uh, introduce some extra cost into, into this cloud implementation, uh, but we actually understood that this, this uh, damage wasn't so big, so OpenStack was actually pretty worthy of putting in production for us. Finally, we learned that we need to test uh, everything that we release in our cloud, in production clouds, very hard and very thoroughly. So now, before we release anything new, we try to abuse it heavily before we release it, to be 100% sure that Everything is stable once we put in production. Now I'll talk a little bit about the roadmap for our roadmap for our future uh, features. Uh, in the short term, and since I prepared these slides, we actually released some of these things in production already. So in the short terms, we plan to bring uh, database Redis flavor to production domain cloud. And we also plan to release currently missing object storage and CDN components into a production cloud as well. In the midterm, we also plan to bring advanced network and load balancing features into production cloud domain. And we will also be releasing some container as a service uh, components. Actually, the container as a service component is already released in the developer cloud. You can check it out, but uh, in production is yet to be released. We also plan to release some supporting services that are not directly visible to end users, such as back office management component and uh, some reporting components. In the long term, we have many ambitious plans for our cloud. Uh, one of the big uh, ones is the plan to introduce another cloud region in Japan. Uh, what is cloud region? Uh, currently, all our resources are based in a single data center in uh, Kanto area, so we are actually expanding in Kansai area as well. This new data center will under full control of the cloud and all the resources there, most of the resources there will be controlled by our cloud. So following this new region in Japan, we are also considering new regions in the rest of Asia and even in the rest of the world. In the long term, we also plan to bring new components and new services, such as uh, generic cloud orchestration or block storage and uh, software-defined network and other components. This being a long-term plan, we are always changing these requirements and plans, so we might come with new ideas and new requirements by listening to your feedback. So this concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for uh, your patience, and uh, I'm looking forward for your questions following the session in the uh, upstairs in the 11th floor in both English and Japanese. Thank you very much.